Welcome to the Shooting Show. This week it's a Shooting Show special. We're at the Ely Hawk Factory, Birmingham, celebrating 190 years of cartridge production. After 40 years of using their cartridges, I finally made it to Ely Hawks HQ in the Midlands. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Hi. Yes, uh, I'll come to see uh, David, please, if that's okay. Sure. Peter, good to see you again. David. Hi. Hi. Yeah, nice to see you. Yeah, come on in. David Thompson's going to fill me in on everything that's going on at Ely as they mark their 190th anniversary. But first, a factory tour. I'm watching their collector's edition paper case cartridges get made. There's only a limited run, so if you want to get your hands on some, don't wait around. And with the first batch heading for the warehouse, David takes me to the office to tell me more about the history of Ely. I'm looking forward to talking about the product and the company history. Yep. Unfortunately, Eduardo can't be here today. He's been called away on business, but uh, it, we know that he's left you a video message, which we'd like you to see as well. Oh, smashing. I take great pride in being able to work for such an iconic company as Silly Hawk, and I feel honoured to contribute in writing the current chapter of our history. Our staff work hard to maintain our unique reputation within the industry and to provide shooters with the innovative and outstanding cartridges that they deserve. To honour the 190th anniversary of Silly Hawk, we've launched our latest innovation in clay cartridges, the titanium. It is a 12 gauge, 28 gram, all round clay cartridge. Loaded in a nickel head high density blue polyethylene case, we've used our premium powder PSB Plus 3 and the unique in the UK nickel shot pellets. Furthermore, we've produced a set of limited merchandising collection. Our customers worldwide will have the opportunity to acquire limited edition 190th anniversary game cartridges. They will also be available the 190th anniversary pair of cufflinks and lapel badges. Yeah, it was nice to hear from Eduardo there, and uh, there's lots going on right now. This year it is, in 2018, is our 190th year. So we've been on the move now, producing cartridges since 1828. The only European manufacturer who's got that level of commitment and depth of history that we've seen across the years. From the early days when William and Charles Ely took it over from their father, um, and started to create the cartridges of today. Even before then, they took on the patent in the 1840s for the Genoa wire cartridge, and that was an encased cartridge with paper mache almost, wrapping this wire case um, with a powder charge at the bottom. Which was quite a leap of faith and a gamble at that time. Oh, indeed, because they had to be sure that um, muzzle loading would die eventually and that the gun the gun makers would swap over to a brand new form of ignition so they then in 1854 put their very first patent in for combustible paper cartridges and that's where it really started they then in 18 Range loading was yeah those. that's yeah, right yeah. yeah and 1886 they they patented their famous EBL shield which you'll see on all of our cartridges which you'll see on the, all of our marketing literature which derived itself from the very first Ely Brothers um, silversmith mark that they used to stamp on their, their old silversmithing spoons. So really the Ely Brothers and their innovations uh, were award winning right from the very start. That's true and we saw that from 1898 when they won the Grand Prix award for um, cartridge innovation at the Paris exhibitions and for us that Grand Prix award was really the, the kickoff for the full business that we've seen grown over these years. 
1924, which was just after the Great War, um, when clay shooting was on its on its on the rise. So many thousand people work the land, gamekeepers. That's correct. Only 20 percent of or yeah. less than that, if memory serves me well, just less than that, that came back from the Great War. So all the landed estates and and the traditional game shooting, the big vast estates and and the, the teams of gamekeepers were no more, and and we've never got back to that sort of pre-war numbers of. Uh, well, game custodians and wildlife custodians on the land. Exactly, and off the back of that, they grew um, a popularity for clay shooting because they needed something else to, to keep, keep them occupied while they built back up the game numbers, built back up game keeping, improved what they were doing, and, and off the back of that, really worked hard to, to rebuild game, game shooting. So we produced the first trap cartridges which could be used um, in lighter shots, lighter loads, so that people could keep on shooting all day if needs be early 1933 when plastics were first discovered we actually managed to create the very first plastic cartridge in the world in 1933 which started the evolution towards what we have today which is higher speeds higher pressures um, improved cartridge ballistics could i just ask for some water please i've got to throw up like a roofing tile sorry <laughs> me. somebody asked me the diva david <laughs> I see we've got some collector's editions and, and you know, the old Grand Prix, I remember that. Even the paper case, sort of, as a youngster, smelling that sort of, you, you know, the, the propellant smell. Uh, yep. And, and it's as vivid now as it was then. So. Yeah. I mean, last year we put out for the first time the Grand Prix cartridges uh, collector's edition, um, built off the 19, sort of 30s, 40s era, just to see if people wanted them. And we were stunned. Within six weeks, we'd sold them all. And it was just like, we'd only done a limited run. Yeah. and each one had a little li limited edition sticker. And the same with the, the collector's edition. We've done more this time because we know there's more people who want them, but we've done a 190th year collector's edition and which people can shoot. Yeah. They're fully live cartridges with ready to go with a six shot, nickel brass, paper case. So it's a mixture of old and new. We've also seen a lot of demand for our other um, bits and pieces we've put together for the, for the 190th year. So we've put together um, some special anniversary cufflinks. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, so the cufflinks uh, basically mimic the, the brass head um, really well with the Ely and then obviously the 1828 and yeah. up to 2018. And, and obviously off the back of that, we then did uh, a lapel badge. A lot of shooters are loyal to brands, <coughs> brands that they know and love and trust. It's a privilege to su support those, those shooters with the products that they want. And it's all been part of the, the innovation story that we've been doing in the last sort of four or five years. We launched the Zenith cartridge with copper coated lead uh, in 20 and 12 gauge. Instead, we've now got that ready in a 34 and 36 gram load variant for this season for later on birds. We've also kept our eye on the traditional market as well by releasing Impact Traditional and Grand Prix Traditional. This year we launched Titanium and Titanium Strike for the clay market, which is the, the only UK manufacturer with a nickel coated lead shot in a clay cartridge and hopefully you'll see that the other films that we do shows the, the performance that's right at the heart of everything we do. Ely have certainly achieved a lot. Uh, and, and the his, history side of it, I mean, I'm just looking back at some of these marvellous pieces of history that, you, that you've got here at, at HQ. And I actually remember being, what, 10, 10 years old, 12 years old, picking this up in the local gun shop. And the old Ely Highmax, I uh, managed by uh, doing a few uh, deals with uh, various people to, to secure a couple of thousand of those. Wow. Yeah, and it was ounce and a quarter, number threes, and I used to use them on everything. Of late, I used the uh, Zenith, is fantastic, you know, I mean, it's, it's the top end product, uh, hard hitting, uh, great stuff. I've shot ptarmigan, I've shot grouse, I've shot uh, pretty much all the wildfowl species. Uh, and colleagues of mine, Jeff Garrett, you know, I mean, Jeff's actually managed to uh, get his face on the box, which I never have. Just quite, yeah, he got a signature on there, which was nice of him to put, a, put that on and endorse the product. For him to help us develop that Pigeon Select and the Pigeon HP was fantastic. Yeah, he was a great guy to work with. Absolutely, a great ambassador for the sport, mm -hmm. and, I, I, you know, and, and certainly, you know, for, for, for the product. And of course, VIP, which is the, the mainstay for, for uh, my shooting right now. Part of what we strive to achieve here at Elio is the consistency in the product, 
consistency in from batch to batch, um, the quality levels that we and the processes that we go through to make sure that the product is consistent, um, always to proof, always to, to the right speeds, always to the right pressures, so that people get that consistent experience from um, season to season and year to year. And that's what we're about, is trying to make sure that that happens throughout the time. time and that and we've it's quite done. something that you cover all disciplines, right through hmm. from, from sporting, player shooting, uh, for competition shooting, yep. right right the way through game shooting, yep. wild fouling. I remember filming uh, Paul Childerly fox driving, yep. using the Alpha Max, you know, absolutely rolling those foxes over. Hmm. We've been involved with uh, people like Jose Suto in his new book, um, Feathers the Game Larder, that's just come out and it's just roaring away, a roar away success. And supporting things like that, as well as the Bass Scouts. I had the privilege to go over to see the Norjam event in 2018 this year, and it was fantastic to see f up to 5,000 Scouts get the opportunity to shoot a gun for the very first time and break five clays. Um, using our cartridges was yeah, fantastic. A, a real privilege. And these are the future yeah. you know, for, for the sport, for, for certain. Yeah. And, and Ely have been really good at, at, at backing good causes. And, and I remember actually being involved in arranging the cartridges for the 3rd Battalion, the Parachute Regiment, for their uh, uh, shooting team, which was fantastic. And uh, talking about history, I remember getting the Ely Shooters Diary way back when I was in short, so it must have been eight, ten years old. 1905, I believe, was the first edition. That is correct, yeah. 114 years By now. My mouth is 114. Yeah. yeah, and it's been packed full ever since then of interesting data, um, speeds, pressures, shot counts, uh, season timings for, for shooting of birds and, and wildfowl and pheasant and all the seasons are in there. Um, we've had always produced it. This year the Countryside Alliance is uh, sponsoring the diary? Not quite sponsored, we're actually donating one pound from everyone sold to uh, the Countryside Alliance and it will go towards the Countryside Alliance campaign for shooting, which is great because that um, you, that money is then used for campaigning work, for developing uh, routes of communication to politicians, public bodies, government, police and so on, to actually campaign properly for all, all of the rights of shooters across the UK to, to carry on um, enjoying the sports they love. It's amazing that we've managed to achieve so much in the last five, 10 and 15 years, really within, within the Ely brand. It's been a privilege to work on it as, as much as it is to, to shoot the product. It's, it's a privilege to work with, with the people who make it happen every day, day in, day out in the factory. No, absolutely, and I can certainly say that it's a, uh, it's a privilege to actually use the product, mm. David, and uh, yeah, everything's easy with Ely. An interesting chat with David there and more on the titanium after the Shooting Show News. This is the Shooting Show News. There's been a lot of talk about shooting on social media after the storm that erupted over goat hunting images online. And Basque has given some advice about how you can avoid being the next tabloid headline. They say you should think carefully before posting pictures online, especially if they feature dead animals. Remember, any photo can be taken out of context even if you went to some lengths to explain it. Also, be aware that most smartphones automatically geotag photographs, which could lead you to broadcasting the location of a shoot accidentally. Threats to the use of lead ammunition are still making their way through European Parliament, and Brexit isn't going to stop them. The Countryside Alliance has reported that the European Chemicals Agency has recommended banning the use of lead on peatlands as well as wetlands, which would mean much of the UK's grouse shooting would have to be done with non-lead shot. Even if this proposal is not approved before next year's Brexit date, it could still go through as part of the transition period. A proposal to ban lead shot altogether hasn't made it past the report stage. As another roebuck season closes, the nation's leading deer managers have had mixed reports on how it went. The very hot weather across June and July made for steady stalking, but it broke just before the rut, meaning activity was delayed, sporadic or even non-existent. In Scotland and the West Coast, the season was particularly difficult, while the east and south of England had better results. Keep up with all your deer stalking news in Sporting Rifle magazine. And finally, Great British Game Week returns next month. From the 18th to the 25th of November, businesses and associations will be working together to raise awareness of game meat, running events, offers and marketing campaigns. Annette Walcock of the Taste of Game campaign said each year more artists and businesses are developing game meat products and this year we will see more game in supermarkets, so let's celebrate it. That was the Shooting Show News.
So I've been asked down here by Ely down to South Down Gun Club, which actually happens to be one of my favourite grounds as well for fit as and sporting, to test their new titanium shells out in extreme range. On the first impression, it's a nice deep aqua blue colour. It's got a large nickel brass on it and no expense has been spared by all accounts on the body work of the case. Having said that, what really matters is what's inside. It's been loaded with a quality grade match PSP3 powder, quality primer in there, and an A-type wad loaded with European 7.5 nickel coated shot, which is obviously extremely hard and retains a downrange energy. I'm looking forward to really getting into this with some range and seeing what it can actually do. We're at the golden 100 mark that Southdown have kindly set up for us. And we're gonna take a shot at this 100 yard till. A genuine 100 yard till and a genuine 50 starting point going away trap bird. We're at the 122 mark from here to the trap. I was hoping to get to 100-ish, and we're at 122. Ely are the current only top manufacturers that are producing shells with nickel-coated shot in, and performed as good as I would hoped, really. Uh, way out beyond the norm, all broke very convincingly and consistently, as you can see. Well, that's it this week from the Ely factory. Thanks for watching. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you're not a member of Basque, it's time to join now. Basque, looking after your sport, looking after you. This has been The Shooting Show.